Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to webinar series of EDSA UNSIL 2021 with us, Good Listening for Better Communicators. And for the first, let me introduce myself. My name is Asri Samrotul Hilmia, and I will moderate this webinar session. So here we, ha we have eight presenters to present about listening. And for the first, I would like to share to you about regulation of this webinar series. So this webinar will last for one hour. The only language used to communicate is English. All participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. And then all participants must turn off the audio during presentation. The presentation will be held in five minutes for each presenter. And the moderator will set the time to remind the presenter. And for the question and answer session, will come after the whole presentation. For the first, questions can be typed in the chat box since the early presentation. And anyone interested in talking directly to the presenter is pleased raise your hand on the Zoom. We will facilitate you if we still have time. If you could not get your answer, the presenters will send the answer to your email. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's start our webinar session today with saying basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And without any further ado, so let's start to the first presenter that will deliver about the goal of le learning language is to speak, but it's all started with listening. And it will be delivered by Surga. Hello, Surga. Hello, thank you very much for the moderator, Asri. All, all right, right, Surga, time is yours. Thank you. All right, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are having a good day today. My name is Surgasli Agustin, and in this occasion, I'd like to present my idea about the importance of listening as the first skill. Before that, uh, let me ask you with this big question about the topic. Which one comes first, speaking? or listening. Let's find out. Next. Listening is a significant skill to develop in second language learning. Why? Because the key to learn language is to receive language input. As Ross claims that listening is essential in language acquisition because it offers input for students and aids in the development of their language skill. Learning, in this case, language acquisition will not occur if there isn't any input. That's why Ross also expressed that the development of listening skills is linked to the development of speaking skills. In fact, next. Lansin defined listening as the first skill to appear, and Oxford also support this statement by saying that listening grows more quickly than the other three language abilities and it can help with the development of the other skills. For example, do you remember the first word you spoke when you are a baby? When we were little, we listen to what our parents say to us like mama or dada. Our parents repeated these simple words over and over again until we understand the meaning from it and make an example by spoken. At first, the pronunciation might not be clear. Of course, it's a baby, what do you expect? But it's actually the same for us 
as an adult, uh, when we learn another language, we knew how to pronounce the words because we listened to it. And we also knew how to uh, spoke it, but uh, at first the pronunciation also might not be clear. So with practice over time, we finally able to spoke it with the correct pronunciation. That's fact number one. Fact number two, we listen most of the time as Paris, Murphy, Fogli, and Hauda, uh clarify that listening is the most frequently used skill in language classroom. We listen to our lecture, we listen to our teachers, to our parents, to our friends, to our family, to the news on TV, to movie dialogue, to podcast, to music, to the sound around us. This is show how often we use our listening tools as an input. And Hedgy also uh, note that listening is an important role in uh, everyday life and when people are engaged in communication, 9% is spent to writing, 16% to reading, 30% to speaking, and 45% to listening. This is show the significance of listening in the communication process. Next. So what is listening anyway? Why it is so important? Rose and Kulita believe that a major difference between more successful and less successful learners is related to their ability to use listening as an instrument of learning. This is why listening is an important part of language learning because learners like us want to understand native speakers and be able to communicate with them. And we also want to understand a lot of multimedia like music, movie, the fast information on the internet that usually in second language, and of course, the social media. Next. So we are back to this big question again. Which one comes first, speaking or listening? And this time I believe that you already know the answer for this question. Next. This is where I got the resources for my topic. And next. And finally, thank you so much for your nice attention. If you have any question, you can drop it on the uh, chat box or you can contact me for more information by email. Once again, thank you so much. And I give it back to Kasri. Kasri? All right. Sounds great, Surga. Thank you so much for your explanation. So uh, let's continue the presentation. And the second presenter is Zafirah Marahaini and will deliver about listening strategy for ESL students. Hello, Vira. Hello, Patrick. All right, Vira, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Okay. So for Vira, time is yours. Thank you to the moderator. Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Zafira Marahini, I'm from Sri University, and here I present about listening strategies for ASL students. Before that, I want to ask some questions. What is listening and why is this so important? All right, look at this. This is how listening works. First is receiving words through the ears, and then the ears is referred to as listening. And listening entails recognizing speech sounds and converting them into words and sentences. Next. Uh, and, what, and what is listening skills? All right, as I have said, that listening is a skill that impacts more than hearing in ESL teaching and learning. Listening skill differs from other language skills in which listening is a receptive skill and the main goal of listening skill is to make sense of the speech and find the meaning rather than the language for itself. Uh, because in learning language, the first step is to listen so that we can understand, right? Especially for people who, who, who are learning second language. But we know that listening skills were neglected. According to Hamula 2013, the teaching of listening comprehension has been neglected in other parts. Why? As a result, even after years of studying English, the educational system has produced excellent writers who lack in listening and speaking skills. This is a serious issue to be concerned about because, yeah, especially in light of Malaysian English curriculum, 
is the same in Indonesia where grammar is prioritized over experience in text, such as listening and speaking. Because there are a lot of features, uh, things that students can learn naturally. Next. Oh, uh, I forgot, but it has unfortunately recovered its deposition. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, where communicative skills are now emphasized. And here the main point, what is it? Listening skill strategy. But before that, we have to know what is English learning strategy. As Bao said, that this is a technique approaches, methods, and reflections uh, that employ to aid learning. Therefore, the need for a listening strategy in order to understand what the other person is talking about, word recognition and understanding, and also to review the legend or important words. Because in learning English as a second language, there are uh, still many students who lack in listening. Next, and here, the <laughs> okay. For the first strategy is bottle processing. So bottle processing takes place in your mind. So when you look at a single letter on your computer screen, for example, you see a um, letter of A, for example, and your eye send information to your brain, which then mixes, mixes. So you know how to, what is it? How to spell it or how to pronounce it. And the second is top-down processing. So in pattern recognition, top-down processing refers to the utilization of contextual information. So in the whole process, for example, it is simpler to interpret critical handwriting than uh, reading single and isolated words. Patterns are useful because they help us to understand and they help to interpret the world. And the third is interactive processing. So it happens when you use both of bottom up and top down processing. Uh, more successful, more successful listeners, uh, according to Graham 2017, uh, employ a broader range of methods with greater flexibility, and they are more likely to employ both top down and bottom up processing strategically. As a result, effective learners' general approach was to use top down processing and rely bottom processing only as needed. And the last is methods. Uh, first method is predicting content. Uh, this is like when you watch or listen to, what is it? Record a TV show or YouTube, and then you pause after every few sentences, and then you try to predict uh, why the speaker might say next. And the second is listening for just, this is just like you see a whole picture, right? Uh, but with an essential difference information, uh, that is delivered in a sequential order. So the sequences of the facts, there are content words like nouns, adjectives, and verbs that can assist you in constructing that picture. And then detecting fan posts. Language has fan posts. Because the traffic lights on the road, they help us to understand what we are hearing. Those words which contains ideas, uh, I mean, which connect ideas, assist us in comprehending uh, what the speaker is saying and where they are leading us. And the next is listening for detail. What is it? Uh, hearing or listening, and uh, you, you, you can ignore anything that doesn't really listen. In this way, you are able to narrow down your search and uh, get the detail you need. And the last is in brain meaning. Uh, so this is like can use, uh, what is it, of what we hear. Okay, everyone, so there's a strategy. Uh, I hope it can uh, help, helpful for you to, uh, what is improve your listening skills and here the references if you want to know deeper uh, more about my presentation you can uh, see the journal thank you for your attention i'm so sorry if there are mistakes if you have any questions just ask me to gmail or even instagram i'll give it back to moderator all right, marvelous, Zafira. Thank you so much for your explanation for us. And I would remind to all participants that if you have a question about what Surga and Zafira present, you can you can drop your question on the chat box. So uh, we will continue the presentation 
And next is Eva Uliana and will deliver about listening skills still floating. Come and realize the proper sequence. Hello, Eva. Hello. All right, Eva. Uh, before you start your presentation, could you tell us uh, one word that describes this webinar series? Please. It's incredible. All right. <laughs> Okay, Eva, uh, without any further ado, let's start the presentation. So for Eva, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, moderator, for the chance that given to me. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eva Liana from English Education Department University. Now I would like to present about strategies listening. Listening skills still floating, come and realize the proper sequence. In the next section, I'll show you the background problem, problem solver, and summarize in listening skills. Let's get the background first. Listening. Nena Sarma states that language learning depends on listening, which provides the oral input that serves as the basic for language acquisition and enables learners to interact in spoken communication. The acquisition, according to Howard and Deccan, is from understanding a speaker's accent or pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, and grasping the meaning. It sounds like listening skills that very easy, but the implementation is still not optimal. Here I have four main sources that make listening skills still floating. The first is message via contact. Learners find it more difficult to listen to a top message than to read the same message on a piece of paper. Second is speaker's accent. Learners tend to be used to the teacher's accent or to the standard variety of English. They find it hard to understand speakers with other accents. The third is listener about culture. Learners are not familiar enough with cliches and collocations in English to predict missing words or phrases due to lack of social culture, factual and contextual knowledge of the target language. The fourth is physical setting. For example, noise. Learners are often distracted by big one noise on recordings and environmental noise. It interferes with the listener's understanding. To overcome those problems, of course, I have a solution by applying three steps in developing listening skills through practice. The first is before listening, by planning for the listening tasks. This activity aims to activate the schemata by encouraging ourselves to think about and describe what we already know about the content of the text and focus attention on what to listen for. Its activities include design text-oriented exercise to engage the, the author's interest by some tables or questions, understood the text correctly, and relax and get ready to pay attention to the listening text. The second is while listening by monitor comprehension. The talks should involve us is getting information and immediately doing something with it. Its activities include try to ignore words that you think are less important, use your general knowledge as well as the content to find out the meaning, Focus on keywords and facts through the notes to support your memory. And try to think ahead, what may happen next? And the last is after listening, by right? evaluate comprehension and strategy use. This activity should help us to evaluate success in carrying out the tasks and to integrate listening with the other language skills. Its activities include think about the tasks again. Have you understand the main points? Remember the speculation you made before you listened, review your, your notes, and check whether you have completed your task correctly. Those strategies are techniques or action that provide directed comprehension and recall of listening input in that increasing our knowledge and developing our listening ability. 
To sum it up, let's make a deal and believe it together that we have to find out what strategies can improve our listening skills and what activities go along with it. Then apply it in our own process. So are your listening skills still floating? Try to follow and apply those three strategies. I think there's enough for me. Thank you for your listening. May all those I have shared be beneficial for all of us. And there's some references that I use. Thank you. I'll give it back to the moderator. All right. Thank you so much, Eva, for your excellent presentation. So let's continue to the next presenter. And it is Gifar Zulfajri with the title Listening Comprehension Difficulties in English Language Learning. Hello, Gifar. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. All right, Gifar. So without any further ado, for Gifar, time is yours. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Good morning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Gifar Zulfajri. My team number is 19212082. On this occasion, I will explain about listening comprehension difficulties in English learning. Begin with the definition. Let me explain. What is listening and listening comprehension is? Gauss defined listening as a process of understanding what is heard and organizing it into lexical elements to which meaning can be allocated. Then Richard and the others state that uh, listening comprehension is the process of understanding speech and it concentrates on the role of linguistic units such as phenomenon, word, and gra grammatical structure, and the role of listeners, anticipation, and etc. Next slide, please. Then, actually, what the matter that we face when listening comprehension? Next slide. There are several indications about the matter or the major problem that is the quality of recorded material. In some classes, teachers use some recorded material that do not have higher quality. It can be affected to the learner comprehension as ESME and the other state that the quality of sound system can impact the comprehending of listening comprehension. And the cultural differences. The learner should be familiar with the cultural knowledge of the language that has a significant effect of learner understanding it is the responsibility of teacher to give better knowledge about listening activities in advance. And the last is uh, accent. According to Go said that 66% of learner mentioned a speaker accent as one of the most significant factor that affect listener comprehension and unfamiliar both native and non-native cause a serious problem in listening comprehension. And familiarity with an accent can help the learner difficulties. And then we move to the biggest challenge faced by listener while listening. The first is listener cannot be managed the speech of speech. It, it is the biggest problem with listening comprehension that listener not, not able to control how fast the speaker speech. The second is listener cannot have word repeated. The listener doesn't break the post repetition and teacher thinks all of them were understood. The third is listener do not have a higher vocabulary knowledge. They may face unfamiliar word which can stop them to think about the meaning at the moment. So they will miss some part or next part of, of the speech or recorded audio. And the fourth is listener may have like contextual knowledge. They sometimes can be comprehend the surface meaning of a passage, but they have substantial problem in understanding the whole meaning of the passage, unless if they are familiar with the topic. The fifth, it is not a very easy for a listener to concentrate on a listening text because if the listening passage is interesting or the topic are familiar for a listener, they will focus to listen and it more easier to understand. Next slide, please. So, after I have mentioned several challenges from major to the biggest, what do we do as a teacher to solve it and how we handle the situation like that? All right, there is several ways that I will share about a teacher role to manage the challenges. 
Number one is a listen, listening activities should be provided based on students' needs and teachers should provide authentic listening material for students that help them understand better the natural speech presented by native speaker. Number two, teachers should design listening paths that arouse student interests and help them learn listening skills and strategies. This task not only uh, the student listening comprehension, but also motivate them to use a various type of listening strategies in order to gain the maximum benefit in doing their activities. Number three, the teacher should provide students with different type of input like podcast, radio, news, film, daily conversation, and interview. The last is a teacher should familiarize their, stu their student with the rules of pronunciation in order to help them hear the different uh, form of rapid natural speech and ask them to imitate the native speaker pronunciation. And I believe with these strategies, the challenge will be solved. Next, uh, maybe it's enough from me. Thank you for your attention. I give it back to moderator. All right, thank you so much for Givar for your explanation for us. And uh, for the participant, uh, I will remind again, if you have a question about about the materials, you can drop it on the chat box. So after after the presenter have give give us about the problems and also how to solve it with our listening. And next is the question how to become an active listener. So it will be answered by Fadila Najla that will deliver about more than just paying attention by being an active listener. Hello, Fadila. Hello, Tasri. All right, Fadila. So I think the participant uh, is not, is can't wait to hear your presentation. So for Fadila, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fadila Nazla Hairunisa, and in this occasion, I would like to present about more than just paying attention by being active listener. Next. Okay. Active listening. According to Silverman, active listening skills are an extension of generic communication skills and involve both verbal and nonverbal communication. It means that in active listening, we are not only giving a verbal feedback, but also by doing nonverbal communication. As mentioned by Rogers, we listed not only with our ears, but with our eyes, mind, heart, and imagination as well. Next. Bolton claimed that there are three roadblocks in active listening. The first one is judging. We as a listener criticize someone or something from our frame of reference. We approve or disapprove of what the speaker says and make a name labeling to someone according to what we heard. We diagnose to make it appear that we know the other when actually we just have caught the shadow and not the substance. We no longer actually see what is happening before us and in us. Next. The second roadblock is suggesting solution. Giving a solution is a good idea, right? But there can be risk in suggesting solution. It takes responsibility away from the other person. It implicitly disempower the other person. I will give one example. When our friends tell us that she has been hurt by her friend's words, we as a listener get a, give advice. If I were you, I will punch her. You are weak. So that's not a good solution, right? So this can make the person feel insulted. The effect of this is some people simply shut down. They choose to not story again because they didn't get the help that they really need. Next. 
The last roadblock is avoiding the other's concerns. These roadblocks deny the person the opportunity to talk about their problems, or worse still, try to convince them that they really are in serious problems and they are foolish to be worried about them. For example, that's just a small problem. You don't have to worry about that. Avoidance can be conscious or unconscious. Sometimes someone just wants to tell the story without needing to be given a solution. But sometimes avoidance is a conscious choice. Maybe the topic is too mundane for the listener. Maybe they don't have the time to uh, to spend to spend at any given time. Maybe they want to uh, stay in control of the conversation, or they want to hear our story in a silence area. Next. So what should we do if we want to be an active listener? As believed by Dr. Nikki, there are six points if we want to be an active listener. The first one is paying attention. This is done by maintaining eye contact with the speaker, putting aside distracting thoughts, avoiding formulating responses while listening, avoiding distraction, and listening to the speaker's body language. The second point is showing that you are listening. This is done by occasionally nodding, smiling, having an open and inviting posture like leaning into one hand. The third is minimal verbal and courageous, encouraging the speaker with small verbal comments such as yes, aha, uh -huh, okay, hmm, and etc. The next is providing feedback. This involves reflection, clarification of the listener's assumption, and confirmation of our understanding of what was said. This is done by asking clarification questions and providing of a summary of what was said. For example, so you said you hurting because of her words. The fifth point is deferring judgment. This means allowing the speaker to communicate without interruption, letting them finish each point before asking questions, and refraining interrupting them with counter arguments. The last point is responding appropriately. This means responding openly and honestly, and treating the other person in a way that we think they would want to be treated. Next, please. Here are the references for my presentation. Next. If you have any question, you can ask at the end of the presentation or you can contact me via email. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. I'll give it back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for your excellent explain explanation for us because as we know that as we want to be listened by other we need to listen to others so uh it's still connected with the previous presentation the next presenter is agnia rahma and will deliver about how to actively listen to others hello agnia hello to asri all right agnia are you ready yes i'm ready all right, so for Agnia, time is yours. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Agnia Ramapauzia, and today I want to share about how to actively listen to others. Communication is one of the most important skills in life. This skill is not just speaking and writing. We often forget that one of the most important part of it is listening. Listening is something more than cycle process of hearing, and it is a matter of attitude and also an intellectual and emotional process. As we can see from the title, how to actively listen to others, we can highlight active listening. So what is active listening? Bauer C state that active listening requires listening for the content, intent, and feeling of the speaker. The active listener show her or his interest verbally with patience and with non-verbal. Visual cue signifying that the other person has something important to say. Okay, next. Okay, uh, there are key active listening techniques and there are four techniques. The first one is pay attention. Second one is show that you are listening. The third one is provide feedback. And the last one is respond appropriately. Let me explain one by one. The first one is pay attention. Give the speaker your undivided attention and acknowledge the message. Recognize that uh, nonverbal communication also speaks slowly. 
to show that you are paying attention to the speaker, you can do this. Look at the speaker directly, don't mentally prepare a rebuttal, put aside distracting thoughts, and look at the speaker's body language. And then the second technique is show that you are listening. Always use your own body language and what is it? Gesture to show that you are engaged. Like not occasionally smile and use other facial expression. Make sure that your posture is open and interested and encourage the speaker to continue with small verbal commands like yes and aha. And then the third technique is provide feedback. Our personal filters, assumptions, judgments, and beliefs can distort what we hear. As a listener, our role is to understand what is being said. And to, to providing feedback, there are two ways. The first way is reflect on what has been said by practicing. You can say, what I'm hearing is blah, 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 or sounds uh, like you are saying is blah, blah, blah. And the second way is uh, ask questions to clarify certain points. You can say, what do you mean when you say blah, 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 or is this what you mean? Like this. And the last technique is respond appropriately. Just be candid, be open, and be honest on your response, and assert your opinions respectfully. Next. There are qualities of listener orientation. Number one is undivided attention. Okay, 100% of your attention is on the speaker. You need to make sure that any important communication takes place in an environment that is free of distraction and uh, where you want to be disturbed. Number two is empathy. Empathy begins with awareness of another person's feelings and develop actually uh, develop naturally out of active listening. Obviously, it will be easier to empathize if the other party simply told you how they felt. And number three is respect. This means thinking well of every person rather than judging them according to a preconceived standard of personal worth. It doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with them, but it does mean that you should be respectful on personal level rather than dismissive or acceptance. And then number four is acceptance. In this context, it's very close to the concept of respect and again requires a non-judgmental approach. It means that you should avoid expressing agreement or disagreement with what the other person says. Okay, and the last is congruence. This refers to openness, frankness on your part as the listener. This can be a problem if you have strong negative feelings about what you are hearing. For example, if you are annoyed with someone, it can be very difficult to show your empathy, respect, and or, or acceptance. And the first course of action may be the better one uh, because honesty on your part will usually lead to the speaker opening up as well, rather than both of you communicating from behind a uh, mask of false availability. Okay, next. So active listening is a way of listening and responding to another person that improves mutual understanding. It is an important first step to diffuse the situation and seek solutions to problems. Okay, I think it's enough for me. Uh, thank you for your nice attention. And here are the list of references. If you uh, any, uh, have any question, just drop it on the chat box. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for Agnia for your presentation. So uh, let's continue to the next presenter uh, that will deliver about a good listener. And the next presenter is Unika Rara. Hello, Unika. Hello, Kasi. All right. And Unika will deliver about deep down into a conversation by becoming a good listener. So for Unika, time is your. All right, thank you, Kasri, and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Unika Nazil Baza, and as the moderator said, that my title for this presentation is "Deep Down into a Conversation by Becoming a Good Listener." Um, from this title, I have two key points that I will explain in this presentation. The first one is conversation, and the second one is a good listener. I will go with the first one. Thank you. Kirst and Vera in 2010 identified conversation as a set of interaction between part, between several participants, and it usually divided into two parties. 
the first one is the speaker, the one who speak, and the second one is the listener, the one who listen. And Taisi in 2019 you mentioned that the practice of listening is a process of paying attention to what is heard and to make conclusion. Next is the second keyword. Burbles and Rice in 2010 believe that good listeners means that we are hearing and understanding everything. And study conducted by Richard Bell Mine in Robinson in 2014 mentioned that there are two responses that we can uh, do when we are listening to others. The first is giving advice. It means that we are sharing our opinions or our points of view for, from what is the uh, topic for the speaker. And or we can just suggest some option for the speaker. And the second one is actively listening. Next. All right, thank you. Robertson in 2005 stated that active listening is an extension of common, common communication skills from both verbal and non-verbal. And Roger Bellamine in the in and Robertson in 2014 mentioned that uh, verbal paraphrasing and asking questions as the verbal involvement, while Robertson in 2005 added that not verbal involvement, including eye contact, facial expression, and positive gestures that shows our engagement to the speaker. And Taishi in 2019 argued that this attitude in listening that refers to react rather than uh, giving a response is one of basic elements in social psychology. Next. Another way, another way to be a good listener is can be done by practicing uh, pre listening. Teachers, Henners and Tracy and Adam in 2020 defined pre listening as a form of active and empathetic listening that in the community where the listeners are focused on making others feel heard. And the process of pre listening is we can go outside to the crowd of people, bring a card for saying pre listening. As you can see, the uh, example pictures I provide in the slide. And we just started to listen to others who want to be listened. And the output for this pre listening is and it can make us more empathetic, more open minded, and more aware to the people in situation around us. And it can also describe new confidence and reduce communication. Next. So the conclusion for my presentation is to be a good listener, it means that we have to know and understand how the speakers want us to respond between giving advice or just, just listen to them. And the practice of active listening and pre listening produce empathetic thoughts and open minded and awareness to the people in situation around us. And those can help us to be better at listening to others. Next. And here are the references from my presentation. And thank you for your attention. I am sorry if there are many mistakes. If you have any questions, you can uh, drop your question in the chat box or you can contact me through my email. And once again, thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll give it, give it back to my dad. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Rara, for your presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, we have to continue for the last presenter, and it is Sekar Wulandari, and will deliver about how to improve listening skills. Hello, Sekar, are you there? Hello, Kak. All right, Sekar. Before you start your presentation could you tell us about uh about how do you feel to become a presenter in this webinar series please um speechless <laughs> right are you excited yes so uh, can you Give us a spoiler about your presentation, please. Um, listening is very important for students, maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, for Sekar Wulandari, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. My name is Sekar Wulandari. 
And today I will deliver the materials about how to improve listening skills. Okay. Listening is key to all effective communication. Uh, without the ability to listen e effectively, misses or easily misunderstood. As a result, communication breakdown and the sender of the message can easily become frustrated or irritated. Okay. Ka. All right, wait for a minute. Okay. Okay, and uh, listening is the ability to accurately receive and interpret message in the communication process. Okay, thank you. Uh, next slide, there, please. Okay, active listening can build rapport and relationship. It can get someone to trust you it and can get someone up and up to you. So these are all important things if you want to be a good communicator and a good conversationalist. Next, and in here I have uh, eight strategies for improved listening skills. Okay, the first point is learn in. The second point is nod and smile. The third point is a contact. It means look eyes uh, with the person with whom you are speaking because it shows that you are interested. And four is no interrupting. When you are really want to say something, wait, please wait until the speaker has finished talking and keep positive feedback like uh, something like, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Uh, and the raising a brows. This show is a curiosity and interest. And the seven point, the seven point is asking questions. The this this is also show that you are actively engaged and participating in conversation. And the last point is the paraphrase. And this is show you get the speaker saying to or talking. Okay, next slide, please. And you can get four qualities of active listening. Uh, the first one is active listening in full non-verbal communication. The second one is active listening in full verbal communication. And the third one is active listening in full responding what to somebody just said and keep the focus on them and let them talk. Okay, uh, for your information guys, uh, you must know for type of listening skill. The first one is appreciate. This is where you are listening simply to appreciate. The second one is comprehensive. This is where you are listening to comprehend, to learn, to absorb to the kind of content that you are listening so that you can learn something. And the third one is, this is where listening, Empathic, uh, it's mean this is where listening essentially to emphasize. And the last point is critical. This is where listening to criticize, essentially to scrutinize a message and to pick it apart. Okay, and the last slide is, I will share the technique to understand everything with method, listen, read, Listen, okay. The first, find a short audio in English and transcript the written text. So first of all, to so first of all, you listen to the recording one or two and try to understand as much as you can. 
Then we'll take the transcript and you listen to the recording again while following uh, what's being said on paper or on the screen. If certain a moment it's difficult for you, please pause the recording and listen to it again if you can't quiz the meaning. If you have done the listen to the recording again with the transcript and only use it if you encounter a moment. Uh, and where you are still understand with sign and the transcript, read and listen to it again and that until you understand everything in the recording. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. And all right, so here are my references for this presentation. And thank you for your attention. I'm very sorry if there were a mistake. Big to moderator to Astri. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Sekar, for your presentation. So, Alhamdulillah, our presentation session is finished and I will open for the question and answer session. So, for participants, you can write your question or you can raise your hand if you want to type directly to the presenter. All right. Here is the question from Susan Supriyan, Supriyatin. Thank you so much, Susan. So, hi, really good presentation so far. Would you explain more detail about how many exact number of practice do we have to prove to be an active and there's no more struggle in listening? So, uh, the question for Susan is how many exact number of practice? that we have do, yeah, to make us to be a good listener and there's no problem in listening again. All right, for presenter, if you want to deliver your idea, you can directly answer the question. Right, presenter, you can answer. Maybe Surga, Surga, you can deliver your idea about how many practice practices that we need to become a good listener. Maybe Surga, you can deliver your idea, please. Uh, all right, uh, Asri, uh, in my opinion, how many exact number of practice do we have to through to be an active and there's no more struggle in listening for me? There's no exact number for practice. Basically, uh, every time we listen to something, uh, every time like like I said in my presentation before, that we listen most of the time. It's actually a, a kind of practice. So how to be to be a good uh, listener? You just have to listen uh, and uh, make your full uh, concentration in what you listen to. Uh, be be a good listener is uh, actually pretty easy. You just have to listen and try to understand what uh, the speaker talking about uh, without uh, what is it uh, any disturbances like uh, what is it like 
when you uh, you have to appreciate uh, the speaker when they are talking about and give responses when you need to like that is that maybe for my answer i hope it helped you right uh, thank you so much, Jurga. There is no exact numbers, yeah. So uh, maybe Fadila, Fadila, you will deliver your idea. Okay, thank you, Teh Asri. In my opinion, we already uh, did uh, activism. We already be an activist because we uh, in our daily life we didn't realize that. If, uh, for example, if our friends tell us the story, we're always saying, mm -hmm, okay, so what about that? It's, uh, and by saying like that, we already be an activisoner. So active, in my opinion, activisoning didn't, we, we don't have to practice because we already did it in uh, our daily life. I think that's all. Back to the moderator. All right. Uh, any idea? Any others idea? Presenter? Or maybe Susan uh, can give a feedback for the answer, Susan? Yeah, sure. Thank you for all those answers. Um, yeah, I can get it, the idea of it. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. So here maybe uh, is the our last question for this session because we are running out of time so this is from Sheila Iliani hi well done for everyone my name is Sheila I would like to ask Zafira since your presentation talking about ESL students is there any different strategy for EFL students in fact that we live in Indonesia which learn English as foreign language on the other hand ESL students probably use English in the in their daily life they their daily communication thank you so that is the question for Zafira Zafira okay, could you Okay, thank you, Kasri. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, okay, I, uh, for my opinion, uh, between ESL and ESL, there's no difference, but if there's a difference, I will uh, search for it. But uh, if you want to know, that's, uh, what is that? Uh, we, uh, as Indonesian, and we learn uh, English as a foreign language, yeah, like for example, uh, as I said, that uh, there's strategies like bottom up, top down. But if you want to, what is it? We are as an Indonesian and we want to learn more. You can use top down processing. Uh, it's just uh, like, what is it? You learn a, a background knowledge. Like when you, uh, for example, uh, I will give an example like this. When uh, uh, you are constantly mindful of the computer, right? And you, you have the computer, but what is it? Uh, but you can't see uh, what, what, what is right in computer, for example. But you know, but you know, because you have prior knowledge about the computer, such as memory or even strong cards and the component, even if it's not apparent, you typically have an idea of what it looks like. Because you've seen it before, you know what it looks like. This is because of your parents. So there's a lot of strategies for EFL and ESL, but I don't find any difference uh, from EFL and ESL. But if, if there's a difference, I will search more about it. And I will give uh, my answer to, to your channel if, if there's a difference. <laughs> All right. So uh, we can so we can use the strategies uh, as an EFL students also, right? Uh, how about Sheila? Can you get the answer? And for the other participants, if you have a question, you can send to the presenter's email. So. Uh, the presenters also will answer through email. All right. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. 
this uh, session of webinar series of EDSA UNCIEL 2021 have finished. So I would like to, to say thank you to all the participants and also to the, to the presenters. Uh, maybe uh, we can, before we leave, we can, we can have a screen capture first. So for the participant, you can turn on your video. And because here is two pages, we will capture twice. So for the participant, please turn on your camera. And I will count from three, right? Three, two, one, smile. And for the page two, three, two, one, cheese. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your nice attention. And thank you so much for our lecturers that come to our presentation. And for, for the last, I would say, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And for all the participants, you may leave the room. <laughs>